if I was to ask somebody to name a British fascist figure from between the two world wars, there's a strong possibility that Oswald Mosley would be the person they named. Yep, Oswald Mosley's British Union of Fascists was a relatively late coming to the game, being founded in 1932. There are a great number of early British fascist groups that aren't very well known anymore. They, they're rather obscure. And there's some figures I found researching this presentation who are quite fascinating and interesting in a twisted sort of way, at least. One of those, and we'll start sharing the stuff at this point, and there'll be quite a bit of sharing, unfortunately, here, because there's quite a lot of figures to share, was this lady, Rotha Linthorn. Okay, well, let's do that again. Rotha Beryl Linthorn Linthorn Orman, born Rotha Beryl Linthorn Orman. She was the founder of the British Fascisti in 1923, a group that was concerned, as were many of these groups, like the Freikorps over in Germany, with being anti-communist. They certainly had an anti-Semitic tinge to them, but that evolved over time, and Rotha Linthorn doesn't seem to be in quite as anti-Semitic as some of the other figures here, although she certainly wasn't free from such beliefs. Before we go on further, um, I should note that one, I'll be putting links for this down the bottom, and Oswald Mosley being the most famous of these, has the most material. I will get a nice big Britannic article in the links. Now, there's one other figure here, and it, this figure, RBD Blakeney, intersects with Rotter Linthorne and also intersects with the figure Arnold Lease. I'll be coming back to in a minute. RBD Bla Blakeney has, uh, was a British Army officer. There is one error I would point out in this Wikipedia article, out of fairness. It lists him as uh, obtaining the rank of Brigadier General. Now, I went and checked that with the Imperial War Museum's records, and they um, show him as never holding a rank higher than temporary lieutenant colonel in World War I. In any case, um, Blakeney doesn't seem to have been a particularly strong theorist. He seems to have been more concerned with um, the erosion of the British Empire and so on. But he certainly had a, a anti-Semitic outlooks because he's connected to Arnold Lease. And when we turn to Arnold Lease, you will see why I've linked the two. Because Arnold Lease wrote for the magazine that Blakeney had pu published for the fa um, British Fascisti. He also fell in and out with Rotha Linthorne. And they clashed quite a bit because they had slightly different viewpoints. Rotha Linthorne, amusingly, once caused all that was mostly hilariously one step short of being a communist, which is a rather hilarious charge to level at Mosley of all people. But let's turn to Mo Arnold Lease. Arnold Lease is a mostly forgotten figure now, unless you're particularly interested in this sort of um, history or know a lot about this subject. I doubt if I chucked his name out in in a public place. Most people would know him. Perhaps if I picked a, a group of historians, they might, or people who are reasonably well-read around this area. He was a British um, fascist politician, but he was originally an, um, a veterinary and an expert on camels, of all things, where he actually found some fame in that department and was actually considered to be quite a, an authority on that. But it's his later sort of fascist beliefs I'm interested in. And by God, he is truly horrific. He drags up the old blood libel from the Middle Ages and goes on about that at length and wrote an entire book about that. And fortunately, the Internet Archive, which specialises in allowing people to look at obscure books, has this book. And here we are, My Irrelevant Defence, Meditations Inside Jail and Out on Jewish Ritual Murder. Now, why the hell would anyone use Arnold Lease, or rather Blakeney, when you know his connection to Arnold Lease, as I've seen in several videos recently, to try and whitewash Dachau and present it as a tough love sort of butlins? That seems utterly bizarre. However, it should be noted that where he pops up and is used in such fashion, and I've seen several videos, in fact, where that's been done, mention of Blakeney's background is not provided thus rendering such historical productions lacking integrity because Blakeney's background is not touched upon in any detail. It's, he's just chucked out there. And unless you know who he is, you can't hazard a guess as to his politics. Once you know who he is, you might ask, why would you use such a figure as Blakeney to try and suggest that Dachau was not that bad, really, a sort of tougher butlins, you know, pontins? 
where naughty people were sent to get a have a bit of a sharp shock shock. But there's another figure that intersects with all of the, all of these figures in a loose way, and that's Colonel Ulrich Fleischhauser, who who was notorious in his day for circulating the protocols of the elders as I on and writing on them at length, and he intersects particularly with um, Lise. Now, I'm going to say that if you use figures like Blakeney and try and present them as sort of um, showing support for um, an idea that Dako wasn't quite as bad as it was painted in its early years, you need to actually uh, honestly mention their background because once you're aware of that, it gives you a different view of why Blakeney would say that. And once you know that, you may be very sceptical about him, his comments on Dachau. With that, I'll leave it. There are These figures all connect, and some of them have become vanishingly obscure, as I say, but always, always research claims made by people. And research mine. Don't swallow stuff just because someone who sounds like he knows what he's talking about says it. Use your own brain. That's what God gave it to you for.